Okay. So we have seen that, you know, the matrices, you know, can undergo similarity transformations and certain matrices, uh, you know, there are special similarity trans, uh, transformations, which it's possible to find for certain matrices, which make them diagonal, right? But we also said that not all matrices are diagonalizable. So in this lecture, we will look at the conditions for diagonalizability. When is a matrix diagonalizable? Okay, so consider an n by n matrix A. So you have all these elements of your matrix. If it has n linearly independent eigenvectors, it can be diagonalized by similarity transformation, right? But there are matrices which are not, which don't have n linearly independent eigenvectors, right? And they are called defective matrices. And so defective matrices are not diagonalizable, right? So we won't go into a rigorous proof of any of these statements, but we will collect together a bunch of facts which pertain to, you know, matrix diagonalizability, right? First of all, there is a simple sufficiency condition. We have already seen that if a matrix has all distinct eigenvalues, then for sure, you know, its eigenvectors are going to form a linearly independent set, guaranteed. So for sure, any matrix which has you know, distinct, all eigenvalues distinct for sure is going to be diagonalizable, right? So this is a sufficiency condition. So the roots of the characteristic equation in this case is going to be, you know, be all, all roots are going to be simple roots. So there will be no repeated roots, right? That's what this is, uh, you know, this is a sufficiency condition. Now, a general necessary and sufficient condition for an n by n matrix is that it must have n linearly independent eigenvectors. So in other words, it must be not defective, right? So the statement that a matrix is not defective is the same as the statement that it is diagonalizable. If a, whenever a matrix is not defective, meaning it has n linearly independent eigenvectors, then we have seen, you know, by construction that you can put together, stack together all these uh, linearly independent eigenvectors and diagonalize this matrix. And it's also true that if a uh, matrix is, is diagonalizable, then it has a, a, a n linearly independent eigenvectors. And if it has n linearly independent vectors, it's diagonalizable. Both these statements are the same, right? You, it's necessary and a sufficient condition. Now, there is a class of matrices, which is, you know, uh, which is very important and appears a lot in quantum mechanics, for example, which is, you know, the class of matrices which are not only diagonalizable, but they're diagonalizable by a unitary transformation, right? So the necessary and sufficient condition that an n by n matrix can be diagonalized by a unitary transformation, unitary matrix, you can find a unitary matrix is that A must be normal, right? Again, the proof of the statement is not necessarily very difficult, but it's somewhat technical. And so we will skip this proof, right? So we will just learn this as a statement that if you have a normal matrix, so what is a normal matrix? So we already saw, right? I mean, the argument which would go into the proof, some of which we have already seen. Whenever you have a normal transformation, it means, and if there are two distinct eigenvalues, then the, the vectors, the eigenvectors corresponding to these distinct eigenvalues are going to be orthogonal to each other, right? So that's the property. It's not, it's a stronger condition. It's not, uh, just that you have a bunch of eigenvectors which are linearly independent, but in fact, they're going to be mutually orthonormal. And you can always, um, um, so, so they're going to be uh, orthogonal and then you can normalize them and so on, right? So, and, you know, the special case that one has to be careful with is when you have degeneracy, right? So a normal matrix, even if it is degenerate, can never be defective, right? That's what this is saying, right? Not only is it not defective, but in fact, it is diagonalizable by a unitary transformation, meaning that not only you, uh, if, you, you can, if you find all the eigenvectors, you can just you know, put them together uh, in a suitable way, or orthonormal set, and then you get a unitary transformation, right? So the, it's not just a similarity transformation which diagonalizes it, but it's a unitary transformation. So it seems like this condition for normality is a you know, rather strong one, but there are, these are very important, this is a very important class of operators and matrices, right? And a subclass of this is, you know, Hermitian matrices. We have already seen Hermitian matrices where 
not only do you get a full complete set of eigenvectors you know orthonormal and everything but also the eigenvalues are real so in fact unitary matrices are also another kind of normal matrix we have seen these right you can go back and review this so but the the result i'm just stating here is that the necessary and sufficient condition which can be proven rigorously is that an n by n matrix can be diagonalized by a unitary transformation if and only if that matrix a is normal meaning it commutes with its uh, hermitian conjugate so any matrix May, uh, you know, can be brought into a form called a Jor Jordan normal form. If you cannot diagonalize it, what is the next best you can do, right? And that is what the Jordan normal form is, right? So just for in the interest of, you know, completing this discussion, we will include a very short description of what this is. We will not go into the details of how to actually implement this and so on. I will give it to you in the form of a, just one example. So any n by n matrix for sure can be brought into a form like here where you know, your it's not going to be, it may not be diagonal, but it's almost diagonal. So you have elements, so the entire matrix is filled with zeros, except along the diagonal, for sure. Uh, that, that's where you have the freedom to put in uh, the information. But also you, you allow yourself, you know, a bunch of ones in this uh, super diagonal. So this can be a one, this can be a one, you know, all the elements in principle along this super diagonal closest to the just above the principal diagonal you know you can allow for a few ones right so there's another way of thinking about this you know think of this uh, consider a six by six matrix i'm looking at a six by six matrix it has one eigenvalue lambda one with but it, with degeneracy two it has degeneracy two but only one eigenvector right you may have degeneracy two and two eigenvectors that's possible but if you have degeneracy two and only one eigenvector which you can find and then you have a non-degenerate eigenvalue lambda 2. Lambda 2 is, you know, is a safe eigenvalue. But there is a triply generated, uh, a triply degenerate eigenvalue lambda 3, right? But with only two linearly independent eigenvectors. Here you have the choice that you may have just one or two or three. If it all three, then it's like, uh, you know, it's a, like a, a usual case. But uh, let, just to illustrate what happens, uh, you know, in this somewhat complicated case I have I've taken this to be triply degenerate but let's say you have two linearly independent eigenvectors then we will be able to put it in this form there is a similarity transformation you can find such that you can put it in this form the first uh, block corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1 and lambda 1 since you can find only one eigenvector you know one will appear here if you have, uh, could find two then it, you could also make this also zero the second eigenvalue is there is just a single eigenvalue so of course it's just lambda 2 now the third eigenvalue you know the first pair has only one eigenvector right you, you can you can form a block like this if you had you know all three uh, eigenvalues had only one eigenvector then you would think of this as a 3 by 3 and then you would put another one here you can bring it in that form but on the other hand you have uh, you know, an eigenvector corresponding to these two eigenvalues is a single one. And there is another eigenvector corresponding to lambda 3, which you can think of as, for the purpose of this type of a, you know, treatment, you can think of this as another eigenvalue, since it has its own eigenvector, right? Although you have lambda 3, lambda 3, and lambda 3, right? So this is the next best you can do. And the theorem states that you can always do this, no matter what your matrix is like, it can be defective. What, of course, if it is not a defective matrix, we all know what the Jordan normal form is. It, the Jordan normal form is what we call the diagonal matrix, right? We have, there is a similarity, we have proved a stronger result. You don't need these ones. They'll all be zeros and you can bring it to the diagonal form. And the Jordan normal form is the next best you can do, which is almost diagonal. And it has, you know, it has its usefulness in certain contexts. And primarily its importance is in, you know, you know when you're trying to understand how general these results are. Right? But for our purposes, we have to be aware that, you know, there are certain matrices which are defective and then you may not be able to diagonalize them. But, you know, the most, you know, the matrices that we will commonly work with, particularly in physics, are matrices which are diagonalizable. And when they are diagonalizable, they are, uh, you know, this procedure has been laid down and we'll see, you know, briefly what advantages 
uh, diagonalization gives in the next discussion. Thank you.